into how developing a future vision and objective after looking to international trends and future uh, foresight will identify what are the invisible elements in design when designing the relationship we we'll look into the different typologies in the government that we need to uh, look at because designing uh, is more complex in the government versus the private sector due to the nature of that uh, service or role of the government. We'll talk about how to develop a customer experience intelligence system and how to use that data in innovation labs and prototyping. And we'll talk about how to implement those innovation and minimum viable services into the implementation and evaluation of that implementation to the uh, uh, governance and establishing of that uh, program. First of all, this is a very high level um, uh, framework of the government relationship innovation. As you can see, the components and the pillars are focusing uh, on the objective, on the intelligence, the labs, the implementation and evaluation and correcting. Of course, with an enabler as a base for governance and leadership and cultural change for such programs to work. This uh, diagram will be guiding us through the whole section of this presentation. Beginning of the setting objectives and vision of the government, we need to understand in the relationship between public and government, what are the uh, international trends in customer service and customer experience, how uh, consumers are or public are changing their behavior. We identify as a nature of the public government relationship, how it's different and what factors we need to look at into designing. And then we look into the different typologies that already identified to help uh, focus and narrow down our work in design. Of course, the revolution of uh, service economy, it's not you know, uh, a new thing. It has been there for a long time. Uh, it started with the agricultural economy, moving towards more manufacturing economy, service economy and data economy. And even now, as you can see in the fourth industrial revolution with artificial intelligence and robotics, and even now more high level into a trust economy. Having so much information and so much data does not make it more easier. It's more challenging to gain the trust of uh, public and their experience and manage it in such a flooded world of uh, uh, innovation. But we'll use and harness the uh, technology and knowledge into uh, designing that information. Um, I mean, if you see, since we said we're going to look at the uh, trends, since the pandemic, it has created a very important shift. Uh, more than 82% of consumers now feel more comfortable using digital channels. Um, the experience is very important now for both companies and government to, uh, uh, to support their brand and build their image and satisfy their customers. Um, even the customers are being um, uh, impatient. 66% of customers will consider switching to uh, another uh, because of bad service. Now you'll tell me how would that apply to a government? That would apply to the government because uh, we are competing as nation with other nations to attract talents, to attract investment. Uh, so yes, this would apply to us in some of the relationship and that we'll talk later. So it's now very important to consumers, with the citizens and residents in any country, is how the ease of accessing, how to uh, um, have a live agent to support if there uh, comes up any kind of problem with the digital um, channel. So, and more and more with the new Z generation and the, uh, the new youth, they are now being able to uh, you know, self-serve uh, in terms of getting uh, public services. They are able to navigate uh, channels, websites, apps, and get the, that service. And even more, they are willing to solve their own problems. Uh, but still, they still need uh, friendliness for the agents that are dealing with them, assistance uh, from them, uh, especially when having technical issues or uh, the design of those systems are not um, you know, user friendly. Uh, different capabilities and technologies have arised and helped 
consumers use their senses and use it uh, in the channels. So you can see through computer vision, you can read uh, digital signature, uh, signal processing, you can read through, you know, uh, language and processing generation. So uh, companies now can do sentiment analysis through social media with, uh, with back end uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence that able to process even uh, uh, emotions. Uh, a lot of systems that can analyze graphics, can analyze the pattern of behavior of people through uh, technology. Uh, in airports, uh, they are using facial uh, recognition for boarding. Hopefully after the pandemic, we can travel again <laughs> safely for everyone. Uh, even now, the definition of the role of the machine learning is changing. It, they are substituting uh, uh, frontline employees uh, by providing the service, by having this kind of uh, conversational interface. And of course, also using spatial design and interacting and designing some of the services is a, a, also a trend in providing services, even delivering some of the services in creating virtual and spatial spac service centers. Uh, added to that, we'll have the augmented uh, reality uh, that uh, all the, uh, let's say, channels uh, of delivery, whether you're look into location of your neighborhood or uh, marketing the tourism uh, in your country. Uh, all these technology are, and companies are, and governments are competing towards utilizing these trends into, uh, you know, providing even health services and educational services. And so now the machine and, and the human are working together uh, in terms of analyzing, uh, you know, such of the example of uh, uh, cancer diagnosis. So there are continuous learning and developing uh, in that area. And a more holistic, if you're looking into a smart city, uh, one of the examples of how uh, Internet of Things is utilized uh, with the technology and redesigning uh, the, uh, the um, uh, waste management in some of the city. One uh, example is uh, uh, Big Berry, which is a smart recycling system. It is an instant that uh, by the time that uh, the garbage is filled, it sent the notification system for the trucks to collect and manage that. And that could be all monitored through a smart system. So designing these kind of services is not limited to an organization. It's an um, um, interdepartmental uh, kind of process with different relationships. However, with such a, a technology, we're facing with a, uh, with a war zone. I mean, uh, if you look at it from a privacy, uh, intellectual uh, property of privacy of consumers, how much we can provide information, if everything is uh, done online. Uh, there is also the hackers, a security issue, not only individuals and countries also in terms of services. Uh, people are changing. People are being impatient to get a service. Uh, and I would be one of them. I mean, if you put me in an IVR system and waiting for lines or waiting to get a response, I will not be waiting. So our expectation as consumers and as residents is really high. Um, and, and that creates an age of distrust. Uh, distrust. Uh, you don't know who's really behind that uh, counter, who's really behind that screen or who's really dealing with you. Do you trust uh, sharing such information? And sharing information in uh, designing future of services is very important. Therefore, uh, a lot of technologies have uh, went into further uh, into designing the relationship between uh, robotics and artificial intelligence and humans, supporting them, you know, uh, elderly or uh, kids with autism, or even just being a companion. But sometimes technology, I believe, is not only the, the solution for getting a service. If you looked into uh, this example, a person who wanted to send uh, a mail to a person but did not know the address. So it was very uh, funny, descriptive, you know, the man with the glasses and the door next door was studying. So that kind of descriptions have reached it, although it was not using technology or using emails and things. And that is with the beauty of the design. You can design things, not only technology, and especially now with the budget cuts and economical problems, and a lot of resources can be um, uh, obtained and tapped on from talents we have, from the community we have. 
Therefore, investing in the future of human is more important. Understanding the uh, caliber we have, the talents we have, and how we can utilize this is very important and can work hand in hand with uh, technological advancement. And humans are miraculous. The competitive advantage you have now is the human creativity, the relationship, the compassion, the critical thinking in solving any of the problems. Now, when we design in a government, there is an important thing that we need to identify the invisible elements. In a government, if you want to manage the relationship, redesign it, there are invisible relationship, which is the social contract. I am as a resident or I'm as a, a, a citizen getting government. I have a, a, a contract with the government to do that on my behalf and to deliver an excellent service, uh, etc. Therefore, there are different kind of network involved. There are different kind of emotional and trust between the parties involved in this. Um, there is a different behavior if I'm dealing uh, or designing a relationship uh, to a convent versus a kid that is uh, different. There is an, a negative emotion. There is a positive emotion. Um, there is an indirect and direct customers. Uh, relationship fit also important. You can have different relationship methods or levels in organizing. If we take the health department, for example, uh, a doctor would have a good relationship with the patient, yet a doctor work in a government that provides medicals through a different uh, pharmaceutical company. So here, uh, whose value is more important? The doctor would suggest uh, the cheapest medicine or the best medicine for the uh, individual. Therefore, I want you to look at this construct. That kind of, of a relationship uh, in the relationship value uh, between the government and the public, uh, we need to understand there is an exchange. So a government has different roles. Sometimes it plays the role of a, a, an entrepreneur, sometimes uh, uh, the guardian, sometimes it plays different. And there is an exchange. It's not always economical exchange. There is a social exchange. And sometimes you can see the output and sometimes you cannot see the output. You can see a long-term output, especially for uh, designing a, a social outcome. And there are different public. Uh, there are individuals, age group, there are who are you know, guilty, uh, who are lawbreakers. Uh, and then comes the service type. So you will see through this presentation, a value chain between uh, what we call a government, a stakeholder and uh, the public. And there is a direct interaction between them. So if I'm giving a businessman, um, let's say uh, a license, okay, I'm organizing, uh, I'm giving that service for a refund, but I'm giving an indirect value to the public, ensuring that all businesses operating in the country are uh, legal and same thing for hospitals. So this is the unit. This is the relationship that I want to design. And this is how you draw it. It's, it's a, a way from uh, back and forth with different values going and direct and direct. And if we take the example of uh, the sector of the, the health sector, and we looked into what kind of different services that can be provided or relationship that exists. So if I'm renting, a, a, let's say, a shop, a flower shop or a coffee shop in a hospital, I'll be dealing as an entrepreneur. I will have a contract relationship. If I'm having an awareness campaign for uh, you know, uh, stopping smoking, then I am a public beneficiary. I'm addressing all the public. There is no transactional happening there. Uh, if I'm licensing a doctor, it's a different transaction. If I'm uh, doing an inspection uh, on a hospital or pharmacy, uh, it's also the hats would be uh, different and the relationship also, or all the factors. Um, so, as you can see here from these examples, uh, a public uh, uh, provider or a public government relationship falls within these seven categories. So, it could be an entrepreneur. Here, I could, and even the naming of the stakeholders would differ. It would be a customer. If I'm providing a community service, it could be a public, a public beneficiary. Uh, the third one, if I was doing a social beneficiary, for example, in the Treating a patient, yes, I'm treating a patient, uh, but in the, uh, for the benefit of the public to have a healthy um, uh, community. An organizer, which is dealing also with businessmen, is another relationship. 
so you can see how different uh, relationships have a positive and negative. Uh, if you took, for example, uh, a person who's complaining uh, on a private hospital who did uh, um, a bad medical procedure and want to complain, the role of the ministry or the role of the Department of Health would be an arbitrator role. So looking to those relationship and conducted my own research on that and looked at it, I have identified different factors that could be redesigned in all of those different relationships, uh, but they vary according to those relationships. So you would look into relationship exchange, you looked into the role of the government, the description of the role, the service concept, and how, whether it's economical. In the customer journey, you would look into factors like uh, experience, et cetera, before and after uh, the interaction, internal factors to the organizational structure, whether it's service quality uh, factors and organizational factor, uh, external factors uh, as a country competing with other nations or with the market or collaborating with other countries or other uh, private sector that will take into place. So this first slide gives you some uh, examples of the customer journey factors that you look into redesigning. So if you're going to redesign a relationship between uh, um, uh, a doctor and a patient in a health, you would look, how is he dealing with him before interaction and after? So if you do an in-depth analysis and building that persona, so what was your experience uh, before? Uh, what was the reputation of that person before the interaction uh, uh, or that uh, entity that you're at? Is there a referral? What was your behavior? Was this the government was the only choice or were there other choices, private sector, whether locally or internationally? All these things are very important to see if they are important in the design element. The same thing for the internal factors. Internal factors, you are divided into service quality, which always have been there when we used to do customer uh, satisfaction. You'd look into the time, the price, the quality of the service, the proximity, all these aspects of the service. And then there's an organizational factor. Uh, from a staff perspective, does the staff of the frontline uh, and designer have the right skills? Does he have the right attitude? Uh, does he have the leadership behind him supporting him? How is his emotional status in that relationship of interaction? And of course, other organizational factors in terms of is there a clear process is there a system is there a structure in place is there a legal uh, framework so if we looked into the other one external factors uh, especially when dealing with the uh, government you looked into the competition whether it's a market countries other government entities dealing with the same thing federal local you look into those aspects and you look at also collaboration uh, opportunities can this service be provided through a private sector? Uh, can we redesign that relationship by giving it to another private sector uh, or community? Especially if you looked into uh, emergency management, uh, the resilience uh, of a lot of community, how can the community pick themselves up and respond quickly? Uh, the, the total independence in, in a government to manage and deal with the crisis uh, is not a show of, str of strength. It is good, but you need that community who are knowledgeable, capable to be able to adhere to such uh, problems. So after looking into all these factors, you can have them lay them down, all uh, factors that I have uh, found through my research uh, and from designing a relationship, yet not all of them apply to each of those seven relationships that we've spoken of. I'll give you an example. Uh, and you can use that form, an empty form of the relationship to plot down uh, and see which are those factors when you're questioning and asking the customer that applied more. For example, if we took the example of a, a company wanting to rent a flower shop or a coffee shop in the um, uh, health department, we will find that, that the relationship is different. If you looked into number one in the green box, you'll find that it's an economic exchange. The relationship is governed by a contractual relationship. There is, uh, uh, there is not much, uh, there is a competition if I want to rent my flower shop here or outside the hospital. There is a choice element. There is an expectation, a business need, uh, maybe an expectation that the rent in that hospital since it's government won't be high. Uh, but there won't be traffic always compared to outside. Uh, 
uh, there is a profit uh, that the government uh, see as a value in providing that service, but an indirect uh, uh, added value is that it provides a choice for all the patients to get that service within the boundary of the hospital. So this is one example. And if you compare it to the next example, you find that not all of those factors in the relationship supply. So we need to look into the awareness campaign against smoking. Now, this is an, a relationship, as you can see, the, the main buckets are there, but the factors that are within them are different. Here, it's not an economical exchange, it's a social exchange relationship. So uh, there is a, a proactive behavior rather than reactive. Uh, they are trying to reduce the amount of uh, people uh, and raise their awareness uh, about it, and they need to have it in a different way. Uh, I found out that uh, from redesigning that is that there is a mass kind of uh, relationship redesign of awareness and there is one-to-one. -one. When a doctor uh, advise um, a certain uh, patient about his smoking habits, it would differ because one-to-one -one interaction is more effective, the emotional handling, the engagement, the experience, the personalization in that relationship has more effect. So when redesigning those um, awareness, uh, the role of the doctor have been uh, important. So how knowing all these information about different typologies, different factors, help us in redesigning the experience and building that database. So what we can do is understand that if we need to design that relationship and we understand that are, these are the key components, then we go back to all our uh, intelligence, customer intelligence system and try to build and source this information. Where can we get it? And I don't like you know, people uh, when they say, okay, let's get big data, all the information, just getting all the information. You don't need all the information. You need to be very selective about what is the objective here? What decisions are you need, uh, do you need or you need to support the leaders to make and gather those information? So that's why I showed you the factors and the framework to help get those information. These are the key information when you redesign. If you have this information, you will understand where are the problems. So it's not only key performance indicators or targets, you need to go further. You need to go to uh, understand uh, what are the metrics that reflect a really customer-centric uh, agency, the relationship you want, the vision that you want to have and go backward and try uh, to get it. Uh, so it's not anymore about just saving times, number of transactions, etc. There are more information as I have sh uh, shown you in the uh, relationship management and how you can develop it. So you will have different buckets, whether it's from customer profile, a service catalog, a relationship, an organization. This is just a, a snapshot of what information you can ga uh, gather in these buckets, buckets and how they can help you design a better analysis. And it's very good to pinpoint this information and where they would go and what is the end report rather than just gathering all this information. And from one relationship to another, it would differ. Uh, the next step in the uh, redesigning is taking all this information and putting it into implementation, into innovation labs. Understanding this information about the customer, uh, the persona, their uh, needs, we need now to gather all the crowdsource, all the um, ideas and the projects and implement this innovation. So from my experience in designing government labs, I found that it's very important at the beginning to understand where is this coming from? Are we trying to uh, envision the future? Are we trying to uh, improve and enhance the current service? Or are we trying to look for new opportunities of uh, uh, advising or developing services? Uh, what is the expectation? What is a successful innovation lab would be? Define that from the beginning. Um, who are the key stakeholders from decision makers, from government entities, and from uh, consumers or uh, stakeholders from public and private sector? Um, the motivation for competing. Um, from my experience, when you have those teams, it's very, and here in the United Arab Emirates, very competitive culture. We love uh, 
uh, to be number one uh, uh, following our leaders. So it is kind of a healthy collaboration and competition within the teams uh, to work together. And uh, you can see great projects coming out of it. Uh, for these projects or labs to succeed, you need a support from leadership uh, that they adopt um, the, uh, the trial and error. Uh, that there is no blame if you go wrong. On the contrary, they value this. Uh, you cannot be perfection from day one in uh, Innovation Lab. You need to change and enter uh, and, and change the process uh, for all the uh, products that come out of it of minimum viable services. Um, you need and communicate results and again, uh, improve and uh, break the norms. For example, one of the labs we had, uh, we got all the entities in and what we did is we tell them from day one, leave the training room, leave those labs, go to the consumers, go to service centers, go to hospitals, go to schools, ask people, engage with them, understand why, why are you doing, how you would like it, um, dig deep more into their emotion, understand where is the root problem that is not clear on the surface, but if we identify it, we'll help develop solutions. So the future design principles uh, always help us, aid us in developing uh, relationships and uh, in general in design. So it should be human-centered approach, co-creation, especially for government. You might have a very great entity, uh, you know, providing a service silo, but when in, in um, integrated services here where the customers suffer and here where we want co-creation, co engaging all government bodies, all uh, uh, entities, all experts, uh, both pr in private and public sector to work together. Uh, the wow factor, how can we really engage in the emotion of the uh, client or uh, the customer, how we can exceed their expectation and tell a great story and celebrate with them? And of course, you're familiar with the, uh, uh, the triple diamond uh, in the service design, where you understand and define, uh, you do your research from the intelligence, you define the problem. And a lot of people really fall back into defining the problem and into ideation of the, uh, and there are many tools in, in terms of ideating and coming up with solution, prototyping, but what is important is the implementation side. A lot of people stop there, we got a lot of brainstorming ideas, a lot of innovation, but when they come to launching it and changing and expanding uh, into the market, they fall back, which it should be always within that um, uh, task. Uh, service design toolbox, so many tools, and I, I know that you have, uh, through this conference, maybe have uh, been exposed to a lot of persona, service blueprints, uh, customer journey mapping, stakeholder. I won't go through all of them because I emphasized on that relationship identification first, and then you can use any of the tools that are available um, here or uh, in the resources. I'll give you an example, for example, you know, building the persona of, uh, 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 let's say, a detective. You would have a clumsy friend like uh, Columbus. You would have uh, a genius loner like uh, Sherlock Holmes, uh, you will have James Bond, the mysterious gentleman. All of them are detectives, but the persona here different. And here in the government, you need to look at this, even within one relationship, you might have different personas. There are different forms you can use and you can develop your own and expand on it according to that relationship. And even if you wanna, there are always available toolkits if you wanna take that further into artificial intelligence, designing it, how you can predict uh, customer behavior or re revenue, how you can personalize that service within the digital platform uh, to engage and uh, reach the customer before uh, they look for you even. How you can recognize people and photos and sound and conversation through social media. Uh, how to uncover structure, because I think it's important to understand the patterns of uh, the users and how you can do uh, a cause and effect analysis and understand how we can use that into designing the relationship again. Implementation, as we said, is very important in the innovation. And especially in this time where a lot of people, both I mean, government and private, are moving towards the digital uh, arena. And uh, transforming is not 
easy just building a website or an app. There is a lot of design elements that need to look into it. And harnessing the knowledge of customer intelligence and the innovation of the ideas that we build through it into technology uh, is vital. So uh, there is a shift, as I've said. Now, 54% of consumers are more uh, you know, used now to the internet, are more uh, accepting to use uh, the internet. However, 10% of companies are reporting success of that transition because they don't do the relationship design well. They don't know how they are using. They need to test it. They need to design it and test it in a very simple way before investing millions and millions in that uh, systems. Um, there are different tools even in uh, digital transformation. You can, uh, you can, you know, sh uh, shadow that person who's using that system. You can video record it and, you know, analyze and observe his interaction or their uh, uh, ability of using that thing and where they found it difficulty and where they can find it easy. You can time them and you can do all kind of analysis around that. So it's very important if you, if you want to transform to digital that you uh, do certain uh, um, actions to, be in a, to enable you to use that information. The first is that you need to adapt uh, an omni-channel engagement platform. You, we have different, so you have your own uh, customer complaint system, uh, uh, contact center, et cetera, but you need to get all those feedback together uh, and they pull uh, into the intelligence systems. Take out the silo, whether within the uh, entity um, uh, or vertically. Uh, horizontally within uh, other entities. Uh, be able, be confident, and uh, take out those barriers and share those information because it will connect the puzzles and uh, the insights that will come with it will be um, adding value and use then the artificial intelligence to uh, uh, analyze those uh, and come up with patterns and solutions, uh, which help then make an actionable recommendation that can build on it and improve the relationship and services. So um, you can also um, use the artificial intelligence in the relationship and moving to towards traditional, uh, towards from traditional to digital uh, has a great impact. It has, uh, there has been reports that 82% of customer uh, service using artificial intelligence has resolved their problem from first contact. And this does mean a lot when you're dealing of providing services for um, hundreds and millions, uh, let's say, of uh, consumers. Uh, you would reduce the time, 79%. Hello? <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, another thing is 79, so hand becomes very important to reducing that, and artificial intelligence help into increasing consequently the satisfaction of uh, the public and the net promoter score. And all of that uh, is uh, the area that you need to develop into uh, adopting digital channels. Uh, the final thing, uh, or let's say the, the last of the pillars is evaluating how you're doing, how you're uh, um, analyzing that relationship or whether you're fulfilling um, uh, that uh, requirement from the pillars. So taking those pillars, I just put some questions. There is a very long list. Of you, but you can see, uh, for example, in the vision, uh, did you do? Uh, did you understand what are the current relationship you have? Uh, do you have a clear structure within the organization? Uh, uh, are the skills identified in the intelligence? Have you identified what are the data that you want to gather, or what are the reports you want to get in, and all of these things. Uh, and the last one is to look into the structure and the, the leadership and the, the governance of that uh, relationship uh, design. Many entities come uh, to me and they want to say, well, we need to uh, 
uh, design the relationship and the uh, innovation of uh, developing the relationship with our citizens. And I sometimes I don't need for you to do, develop your own department, but these are the key functions. Look at them. You need to have someone who take care of the customer intelligence, someone who have be able to gather the data, uh, use artificial intelligence, build the system, understand the habits, and provide this information beforehand to the innovation labs. You need someone to manage the innovation lab, whether uh, they're developing the tools, the standards, the venue, uh, the, the patent, uh, and all the crowdsourcing of innovation. And the last section is the implementation. You need the people who have the skills of uh, those um, uh, prototypes and launching the instability of them. So uh, capability, we need people who are service designers who are flexible, who have ideation, who have team and people skills, um, and who are able to uh, use their research skills and problem solving. Agility in this time is very important in to, uh, when looking into a problem, be able to come again, uh, visit the game and come up with a solution. And from uh, the uh, service tree design, it's not easy doing it the private and public sector. So you need to change that culture. You need to have champion within organization for service design culture. Uh, for to change the culture, you need to change the mentality, values, feelings, and behavior. And through uh, managing change. Uh, you will be doing this. You need to have a role model, a support from the entity, from leadership, uh, and cascading down, bottom up to top bottom approach. Uh, you need a role model. Who is that champion who's gonna show a quick uh, wins that's gonna show exemplary of uh, that innovation? Um, and how we define the culture, which is even more important, what is the culture that we want? How would it look like? Uh, to do this, you need uh, uh, individual, on many level, individual, organization, and, and society. And there are certain stages for culture. You need to do a diagnosis of what is the current culture, what is the future, uh, engage in leadership, co-create, and implement those program or initiative. And the same thing if you do it on individual level, because you need to, to change individuals, and also uh, on the societal level, because some of the programs you have in redesigning engage a lot of the public in the government arena, and you need to engage that. Thank you very much. I know I took like uh, an hour, but I wanted the rest of the time for us to engage in discussion. If you have any questions or uh, uh, any inquiries, I'll be more than happy to answer. Yes? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, marhaba. Dr. Munna, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, so, uh, just a couple of questions. The first one is um, Can you just tell us a little bit about uh, what uh, governmental entities uh, you've engaged with uh, prior to being a consultant? Yes. Um, sure. Uh, I have been working in many government levels. I mean, I worked for almost 20 years from, uh, um, from Dubai Airport Free Zone. I worked into Dubai Municipality, which engaged with a variety of uh, customers and entities. I worked in uh, uh, Dubai Executive Council, uh, leading uh, customer satisfaction, uh, customer uh, complaint system and suggestions, and also designing uh, services with the customer relationship management, and also work with the prime minister office as a, a director of service development. So we worked on many levels in the government. So from researching, understanding the customer to developing systems, to engaging with innovation labs to develop uh, those solutions. Okay, great. So, so the follow-up question is this, what are the early stages of the transformation that's happened in the UAE? Uh, yes. What are the kind of major obstacles that you saw? Uh, a couple of things, one is the governance, uh, and then the actual uh, implementation of any uh, uh, product innovation strategies that you want to implement on the ground? Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's a very good question. 
and uh, I think what you, what uh, it is a, it's, a, it's a cultural change. I think the mindset is very important for any change. When you're talking about designing services, changing the, the way that services are delivered and innovatively coming with it, it's all driven by people. It's uh, dealing with customers. And if you're dealing with an organization who have been uh, uh, used to a certain way of managing and, and uh, implementing things, I saw it through my career. So I, I was an individual working in, like say, Dubai municipality. There was a lot of training about the quality, about the excellence, about uh, how important the customer results. And that is changing. As I go in my uh, career path, I see that it's engaging more about how to be customer centric, how to engage, how to co-create. Hello. So, yes. I Someone on the link. So that's how the, the challenge is, but it's all about communication. If you get the, your leadership support, it's key for your, the, 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 the team and the people. You need to a lot, and if you've seen in the both local and federal government, a lot of programs about training, education, putting standard, engaging, and having those successful story for it to uh show evidence that it would work so these are the key uh things but uh, even in the um let's say uh the development a lot of people when like at the initial stages of developing the digital government they thought it's just having a website and just having an app and then you got flooded with hundreds of apps and hundreds of systems which has become obsolete and waste of government resources now what is the approach is the directions towards integrated services one-stop shop, seamless services that even proactive. Uh, the customer does not care if you are providing uh, that service in your channel and the others. He needs to reduce the number of visits. He needs to reduce the number of paperwork. And it's an ongoing process as, we, uh, as it's delivered. I hope that helped you answer the question. Yes, thank you. Any other question? Hi, Mona. Hi, Media. Yeah. Yeah, I hope I hope if there's more uh, questions. Uh, if not, I can. Uh, I would like to put up a poll just for the uh, delegates to attend the poll. Just let me know when um, you are. Yes, please. Wait. I do. Uh, if nobody else has questions, I do actually have uh, a couple more questions, if possible. Yes, please go ahead. Stay um, so I just I, I want to go back to the uh, the, the governance uh, element when you, you refer to the municipality. Now the municipality works with um, uh, uh, I forget about the public. You know, the, within the government sector, a lot of different entities. Okay. Yes. Um, how do you how do you manage that? I mean, from 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 you know the, the first parts of the the, the uh, you know the first slide that you showed us the framework, you have mm -hmm. the future design vision. Yes. Um, how do you manage who should be leading, for example, uh, mm -hmm. this this uh, this design activity uh, yes. between the government sector players? Yes. Um, thank you. Now, very good question. Uh, we had that um, experience when we designed the customer happiness uh, factory, uh, which is one of the projects in the federal government that uh, um, I've led and engaged in the public sector. What we had done, what, let me give you a little bit idea about it. What we wanted is to get all the integrated services that are affecting the citizens' uh, life event, for example. Uh, a newborn, if you heard about the service, for example, Mabruk Mayak, it's a service that if a newborn is uh, coming to this uh, world that we celebrate as a government with them, we uh, rather than going to five or uh, eight entities to get the identity uh, card or the passport or the, all of that would be uh, done through a one-stop shop. Now, Deciding who's the stakeholder depends on the nature of that service. So we looked into those, this, this bundle of service, uh, like uh, having a baby, and uh, we looked at who the entity. So there was uh, Ministry of Interior, uh, 
um, uh, Emirates uh, Identity Authority, there was the health department, there was uh, uh, etc. So, so many other departments. So who was the lead? Uh, there are many entities. Sometimes it could be the most entity who has the key information, uh, who maybe have more uh, active. Uh, it would differ, but I think the key owner there was, uh, it, we always try to tell them it's a share, but there is always be a sponsor. So Ministry uh, uh, of Interior was uh, the main one because all the data and the um, passport, etc., was there. And they had provided the support to lead such initiatives. Um, and it's all in collaboration. So even when something goes, all of, uh, we celebrate all of the entities who have made that project successful. So uh, it depends on the industry. So, and also there are all other sectors. For example, most of these sectors, and you are familiar with it in the government, you will have the health, you would have the education. There are always councils behind them. There are always committees behind them. There are always a leadership kind of level that overlook uh, them. And we have that in the um, Ministry of the Cabinet Affairs. And, and you would have the cabinets and you have the ministers following them. So we'd have different, you would have the leadership uh, overseeing, and then you have the operational teams and you will have also the technical teams. So you would have many levels in that, but definitely the, the one that have the most take or the most of the process uh, in the redesigning should own it. Uh, and not on it should lead it, let's say, in that kind of, of change. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Marhaba. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Mona. I really uh, enjoyed the sessions and it is so insightful. And I just peeped in actually about the uh, last 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. I really enjoy the discussions and also the topic. I have a small uh, question, Dr. Muna, uh, if you can just elaborate mm -hmm. on uh, custom experience uh, mm -hmm. so that we can make a better understanding. The importance of building custom experience maps, methodology, and scoping. Is it important or is it, it is uh, the earliest thing or the foremost thing that you do is you uh, go for, uh, you know, uh, like identifying application and system like artificial intelligence or other um, uh, technology to contribute toward achieving the organization objective. Like if I, I have an organization, whether it is uh, local or federal, so which, which is important? Is it uh, to have a uh, custom experience, methodologies, maps, and scoping, or some, I see some organization or some entity, uh, they go for investment on technology, and they do it in partial and silos um, so that it will not achieve the organizational objective. Uh, I love to have some elaborations from your experience, doctor, on this area. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. It's a very important questions when trying to uh, create the digital transformation. Um, a lot of people, as I said, rush, rush towards just automation. So if you have a bad process or let's say a process that is uh, uh, long and uh, repetitive and duplicated uh, in terms of requiring work, you will make the customer more frustrating just by having it, um, uh, you know, digitized. The best thing is to redesign the customer experience and redesign that relationship. The solution might be very simple and you don't need that amount of investment in a system complex. It might be very easy. So that would really save it. So I agree with you. The customer experience uh, maps and blueprints are very important to have this before initiating any kind of uh, transformation um, into digital uh, area because the frustration will remain within the customer, whether it's, it's traditional channels or whether it's digital. I still sometimes, as a citizen, sometimes I go to certain services and because of I'm looking through at the service uh, designer, uh, I, I can say, why did they do this? This is taking a long time. This should have been easier. And, uh, and, it's, and, it's, and this is what we should really be doing. We should not be rushing through, you know, just contracting big amount of uh, projects and, and to systems 
that are uh, obsolete and uh, not valid, that are a waste of time. If you were a business owner, just in a put the hat of the private sector, you would think hundreds of times before investing that into uh, a system that will, will waste your money, not save you money. And luckily, we have a government here in the UAE that really is looking not only into customer experience, but also efficiency. Uh, it's looking into uh, more of uh, outsourcing, more of to privatizing a lot of the department because uh, this is how efficient we want. Uh, we want our uh, uh, country to be excelling into the providing the customer uh, experience. So definitely a blueprint is very important and it could be very simple. You don't need this complex, it's a very simple journey. And this is what I like about the service design. Uh, you don't need to, to you know, design a Ferrari to drive from one point to another. You can just have a small board with two wheels and it can take you the same thing. And this is, is good because you test things, whether it works or not, it gives you feedback that for the next time for you to design a technology solution, it would be good. So um, I am with you know artificial intelligence, but the planned one, uh, the needed one. Do I really need in that service to have an artificial intelligence? Maybe not, maybe more human interaction. And when you design the customer journey and identify the relationship, maybe you find that uh, management is more important for them than the time then here will be, you would be defending and here will be negotiating with decision makers is where is the, uh, the improvement should be done. You don't need to automate the whole thing. Maybe the thing is good as it is, but this is the moment of truth. This is the bottleneck that you need to enhance to get that service. And it would be easier on both uh, organization and teams and budget. And this is what we need as uh, a government, the, our designers doing that uh, to help give them the clear. Because I've been in the customer service area, there's a lot of information about how happy or unhappy they are or how satisfied or not satisfied, but why it's not clear. Without redesigning and going in depth with questioning and asking the customers, you won't know why is the in-depth uh, reason or behavior they're doing. And that's what I encourage you. And definitely we should go for customer experience um, uh, design for that. Hi, Mona, Samana with you. Hi, Samana, how are you? Fine, thank you for beautifully giving an answer for the point that I thought is very, very valid that you made, that people are running towards digitalized and uh, digitalizing everything or artificial intelligence using it. Uh, they need to design their service operation. They need to design, they have to map, they need to know what the customers want because it's going to fail, you know? The whole process is going to fail in, and it will be a chaos. So thank you for making a great point. Thank you, well done. Thank you for attending and participating. Thank you very much. Well done, well done, thank you. Any other questions? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Thank you so much, Dr. Ramona. Um, I just wanted to ask about, uh, perhaps if you can elaborate more on the challenges that you have faced, uh, especially that you've talked about federal government planning or leading at least um, mm -hmm. the efforts, uh, for example, for the happiness factory. Um, mm -hmm. Can you please elaborate on the challenges that you faced on cascading these efforts into local governments and at the end of the day, the, um, government official that will be actually facing the, the customer? No, it's a very good question. Thank you. And then this is, uh, again, uh, taking the discussion about innovation labs, all the results of the innovation labs. At that moment, it's very nice. It's, uh, we get a lot of ideas, but what we do with it is important. And from my experience, there are different uh, ways. So each of the bundles, we had eight bundles uh, affecting some of having a new baby for uh, higher education, for getting married, for uh, even companies uh, starting a new business or getting a new employee. Each of these bundles had a different route. Uh, some of them have been adopted by Ministry of Interior and they have uh, developed it with the Telecommunication Regulatory Authority, part of their uh, smart uh, government uh, plan. 
and they utilize the existing systems. So there are a service bus and there are uh, FedNet, some of the infrastructure that is there. And this is the beauty is that you don't need to reinvent. You take this idea, use it uh, to with the current system and take it to the next level and uh, utilize the current assets or current uh, uh, organization that enable that to grow and uh, help. Now, this did not happen to all of the uh, services. Some of the projects, uh, let's say one is Tajribati about how to get uh, uh, more locals in the work government, it took a different form. So there was a first time uh, signing an MOU between nine entities. Uh, and I think it was led by the Ministry of Labor because this is kind of more of their scope. And it got merged within another system that they have within their organization. They had some existing, but they took that information with the, the private sector uh, company that helped enable the prototype and took it further. So each, each prototype or each uh, solution need to have a, a pathway, but the pathway change for continuous implementation and scalability according to the nature of that service uh, the funding availability, the uh, support from the leadership from the entity also. And that's why from day one, we had the leadership also coming, engaging, following. The launch itself of this uh, service factory was uh, launched to their highnesses, the prime minister and the ministers, and engaged with them. So that kind of push you needed within the government services to, to see the light, plus uh, the adoption. And I'm glad that a lot of entities don't wait to get for that push. A lot of them have also initiatives. So uh, some entities are more um, pro to de developing or they might merge it with their own uh, uh, projects. Other uh, projects uh, that uh, innovation centers took to, uh, more into commercial size. So, uh, which is not with my project, but with the Mohammed Bar Rashid establishment, they sold the idea. So now the commercial side of it is coming along and uh, that would be very interesting for a government to be a revenue generated also in, in that perspective, we can sell our innovation, not only locally, but even internationally um, for that matter. So yes, so the challenge was first, uh, you know, getting this implemented and getting it to a root and someone to follow it up. And I don't want it to be just a bubble idea and then does not see theirs because now you set high expectation for the citizens, but then you don't deliver. The, um, the other thing is that for us to change the culture of telling them do a minimal viable service, make a little prototype. No, no, that's not, <laughs> it was very difficult to convince entity because showing uh, projects always go into big scale always uh, you know big solution but we always try to narrow them down and tell them okay okay you want to do this let's start with the first function and when we took the first function and then they elaborated they saw how much work needed to be done in this um how much uh, implementation uh, needed to go into it, study and prototyping, uh, even the prototype just to do it. So uh, in, a, in a country, in a government that need to be number one and the leaders who want to have the best, it's always challenging uh, and it's stressful for entities to engage in those prototypes. But when we showed them how fruitful it is and, and it's fine and the leadership liked the prototype and how we can display it, they were more encouraged. So you need even uh, to gain that, uh, change that culture to have this kind of uh, uh, trial and error. And uh, these will help you, these challenges, but as you go and you repeat that across different departments, across different uh, uh, entities, you'll be able uh, to achieve it. Any other question? Or maybe challenges you faced and Mike can help you solve that. I have another question. Yes. No, this is what I like. يعني أنا مشيت على المتيرل عشان بألحق. I have a good time to discuss with you all. Allah يعطيك العافية دكتورة. طيب. So regarding the framework itself, the innovation design management framework. Uh, yeah. The question is, اليوم are all government entities applying the same type of framework? Um, if, if not, okay. Why not? Mm, very good question. So the framework that I'm now presenting is the uh, service design relationship framework. It's uh, the framework that I've developed here with the, um, uh, the company that I have. 
The government have another uh, uh, innovation framework, which is uh, delivered by Mohammed um, Rashid. So they have this framework, a standard that they can follow. But my my lens that I put it on relationship, which is more related to services, more related to that specific nature, which is not still uh, shown. Which from my research I found that it's the missing link. Now all entities have those guidelines, have those standards, uh, and they are following it up to a certain extent, but then they even go further. They innovate. They maybe customize certain parts of it to their uh, nature, to their nature of business. So, uh, yes. Sorry. Can you, can you repeat who who the mean the فرض عليهم أو يعني I'm sorry. Who put this framework in place with all entities? من الجهة. So just to give you a background, Ministry of Cabinet Affairs and the Future, led by His Excellency Mohammed Al Gargawi, there is a, a, a Mohammed Bar Rashid uh, Innovation Center. This okay. center is uh, uh, is uh, is the direction of it is to put the toolkit of innovation, put uh, the plans of innovation with entities, follow up with them, create uh, innovation apps with entities. Uh, uh, Graduate, so I was one of the first graduates from the first cohort of innovation diploma. So what they do, they create change through training uh, champions within organization of each uh, sector, let them have projects. In addition to that, they ask them to have their own plan, like uh, KPIs, there is a KPI on uh, in collaboration. So this center in collaboration with the uh, Prime Minister office where we have our strategic objectives, our KPIs, they have a KPI for innovation that also motivate them towards this. In addition, we have the awards, uh, Sheikh Khalifa Awards for Excellence also have innovation criteria. So it, they are all work together, uh, um, yeah, orchestrated toward motivating through um, being a catalyst and uh, encouraging entities to work in this. Now, how they use these tools and how they uh, innovate, it's each entity. They might engage with uh, their citizens, they have their own labs, they are uh, developing uh, their own artificial systems. This is to let, but all of that is reported to the prime minister office. Very clear. Actually, that's a very interesting model. Um, I'll, I'll try to look online to know more about this. Yeah. Uh, it seems it's working, right? Sorry? In your opinion? In your opinion, do you think it's working? Uh, it is. It is working to one extent, but for me, I'm talking from a customer perspective. You yeah. need to follow that innovation and ensure that it's satisfying. So innovation is, is in, in a continuous progress. It, it has changed people's mindset. Believe me, uh, changing mindset is very important for people to talk about innovation. But now it's more to work on the practicality. A lot of things, uh, alhamdulillah, yani in UAE, during COVID, we found that the technology that have been invested in the country have helped us. I can teach my kids at home. I can get a lot of, I can renew my car at, and I'm at home. I can do a lot of services when I'm at home. I don't, I have the digital. So the innovation was not invested now, just when it has been a, a long uh, career. I mean, uh, a long uh, change. I mean, even countries like Singapore who have, you know, a very advanced in, in terms of digital transformation, it has been there for a long. It was a vision, the leaders put, there was a plan, there was a continuous uh, change. And the same thing here also happening uh, in the UAE. They are talking now about uh, designing even the future, not only the existing one, as if you can see now, uh, a lot of um, if you should, they are all engaged now onto how we take all innovation from all the community in developing the future. So, uh, but again, it's good always to balance. Yes, we're looking for the future, but we also, we not only maintain how we excel, but we, we improve that. Because as I tell you, citizens are, uh, their expectation is getting higher and higher. And it's very challenging with the changing in the economical condi uh, conditions, the uh, resources, et cetera, to be able to do this. And, and it's, and that's what the government is trying always to do, is to 
uh, and it's one, not only the government, the community should aid the government in that uh, operation. Even me as an individual working in the private sector, how can I help the community? How can I help private sector? How can I help into really understanding uh, what's happening? And I advise everyone who wanna really innovate is always to go from a customer perspective. Just go one day and do that service by yourself. Look at the things that you can get as insights from problems, opportunities, from just one visit. And, and for me, I, I really love it. Be your mystery shopper. Go and observe. And don't do anything. Just sit and observe. Just try the system. The amount of information for even not an expert, an individual, you can just sit with people and they can give you so much feedback about how to improve. And improvement is always there. You cannot reach like perfection. There's always an enhancement. There's always an improvement. But it's important to ensure that we have delivered the minimum need and, and we have maintained it and it was not uh, broken before we go ahead and look into uh, other aspects. Thank you.